Hello and welcome to this instructional video on servicing an IB108 breakaway. First things first, you will need your IB108 breakaway. The instruction manual that tells you how to service the IB108 breakaway. A large spanner capable of three and a quarter inch or 81 millimeters to undo the breakaway. A large torque wrench capable of 120 newton meters with a fitting on the end capable of doing 81 millimeters or three and a quarter inches. The service kit for servicing an IB108 breakaway. The torque wrench capable of doing 30 newton meters. The IB108 tool for removing and installing the poppet retainer. A large screwdriver. A thread locker, an anti seize cleaner, and plastic picks. The picks, make sure the picks are plastic, as a plastic pick reduces the risk of you scratching the ceiling surface when, or any other part of the IB108 when disassembling it. So, to start with, we need to separate the IB108. We do this in a vise. The IB108 into the vise and make sure it's locked in quite tightly because you are going to use the vise and pry it apart and if you don't it can slip out. Next stage we need a large flathead screwdriver and we want to put a hand on the back of the thing because that's holding it in place and we use a flathead screwdriver to push against these cap screws that we see here in one of the cutouts by leveraging against the part of the vise. So you leverage it against and you push down while pushing against the opposite side that you're leveraging from with your hand and it pops apart like such. So now we have the two parts apart, continue stripping it down. So remove this part from the boat from the vise. We need to put the body back into the vise. So if you look on the body, there are two flats here and here. These will be held on the vise. But if you'd like to keep the breakaway looking good, you can also wrap it, you can wrap a rag around it. So when you put it into the vise, you're not scratching into the anodized surface. Once that's in time, you need our big spanner. Like so, and you unscrew this part. Now to pull that, put this to the side, and inside the body you will find a big spring and a popper. These are to be discarded as there's a replacement in the seal kit. So now we pull this body out of the vise, go right to the side, and you can start removing the O-rings. So first off, you have the O-ring inside the body. So you simply use your plastic pick to get in behind, pull the O-ring and the back up out and discard them. Do the same thing on this part again. O-ring pick behind and discard the O-ring and then again pull the back up out and discard that. And on this part you notice these two O-rings and two backups. So you simply pull these out. Again using the plastic pick. and discard those two parts. Now within this part, there is a pop of a retainer. We need to remove these. So we put this into the vise. Put the nozzle facing, this shoot a bit facing down, and the retainer facing up. This is where you need your tool. Simply dislodge it. That's the side. Take the retainer, put that to the side, and then you remove the pop it and the spring. 
footprint and we discard those if there is replacement in the service kit. Now that we've got this fully stripped down, we need to inspect it and clean it. So you take the cleaner and the rag, you spray onto it and just make sure to remove any grime, any dirt, any grit, any excess grease from different parts, checking all around it. Make sure the o-ring grooves are really nice and clean. And on all parts and on this part, on the male part, you're looking in this groove here and seeing if there's any indents or much damage onto this. There's a few very surface scratches are not going to affect its use, but if you start getting a bit deeper, they can start to uh, affect the use. And it also happens the more it separates, the more deeper these gouges can get. So after a while, these can actually get to the point where they start lowering the separation force of the device. Make sure that's clean. And then again, you clean this part. So you want to make sure that this is an o ring sealing surface here. So you want to make sure that's nice and clean. And there's no damage to that. This part here. And then again, with the o ring groove in here, it's cleaned out. And there is no damage in there. You can clean the excess grease off the antices off the thread, the end of the device and the cleaner, and then have it inspect into this vent hole here. As in that vent hole, if that is blocked, that can cause uh, self separation. If there is a little leakage or anything when first pressurizing or adjusting, that can cause a build pressure build up to separate the device and make sure that's nice and clean. There's nothing in there. The side, and the final bit is the body. So in here you've got the thread, you want to make sure there's no damage on this thread and that that's nice and clean. You'll see there's a iron groove below it. That is another part you want to make sure is nice, clean and there is no mix or scratches in there. And then if the really bottom here, there is where it concaves in, caves in and it reduces in and it's rounded. You want to make sure that's nice, clean and no scratches because that is where the poppet will seal if this separates. So that needs to be nice and clean. And on this other side, you want to inspect this bore. Again, it's free of damage and scratches, as that's where the O-rings will, o will seal on this as well. And the final thing is to go through the end, all the indents, and make sure they're still operational and not jammed up. Once you have done that, and you're happy that this is nice and clean and in good nick, we can move on to reassembly. After disassembling, removing all the seals, and cleaning and inspecting the, uh, the IV-108, we're now happy that it is ready to be put back together, so we'll re it and reassemble the, the IV-108. To start with, we'll take the body and we'll put the O-rings back into the body. So for this, we have the two bigger O-ring with the backup, and we will then put some of the super lube that comes in the service kit on the o-ring and spread it evenly around. So with all our o-rings, they will come with a backup and the backup will have a concave surface on the o-ring and this on the backup and this will face towards the o-ring. The backup is there to, as it said, back up the o-ring so it's also important to make sure you have it in the right direction which will be explained. So on the body We'll put the O-ring in first, and the backup will be on top. So the backup now goes on, the concave surface facing towards the O-ring. So in this instance, the backup will be face, will be towards the thread, and we'll put that in. Again, making sure that the backup has not rolled, inspect it, and make sure that it is sitting in there nice and evenly. Once that is done, we'll grab the next part which goes into the body, and we'll put the O-ring and backup into this. This uses a smaller o-ring, and we will again grease these with the super loop, spread around evenly, and assemble it. So this part, the o-ring, the pressure comes this way, goes upwards. So we will have the o-ring on first, and on top of that will be the backup. So put the o-ring on, and again make sure the concave surface faces towards the backup and put it on. 
it's important to make sure that the O-ring has not, the backup has not twisted in any way, because then it will not make sure it is straight and light, even around. And as you can see, the backup is this side and the O-ring is this side. Once that is done, we put that to the side and we grab our male part. With this way, the pressure comes out these holes, so it's important to have the backup outside of the O-ring on both ways that go on here. So again, take the super lube, smear it around both the O-ring and the backup, and we'll put the backup on first this time, as it needs to go down the whole length. And once it is in, make sure that it is the concave face is facing up and is not spun. And then next, we will put the O-ring on. And it will sit like that. So now we do the other O-ring back up. Again, super lube. Smear it around evenly. Put the O-ring on first this time. And then the back up with the concave surface facing towards the O-ring. Make sure it's not smooth, and there we have that part. So the final step of this is to put the poppet in here with the spring and the retainer. So again, this goes into the vise, and from the service kit, you will grab another poppet and another spring. The poppet will simply put this first, and then the spring will go on top of the poppet, and then. The retainer can be screwed in. Because the if you look at the retainer, the thread is on these three parts here, because it's not a, a 360 degree thread all the way around, there's the potential that you can misalign these and they will not screw in straight. So when screwing it in, be careful that you do indeed screw it in correctly and it goes down nice and smoothly and doesn't feel like it's picking up or binding. This stage, you can grab the tool again that you use to remove it and retain it the first time, and then use it to screw it back in. Until it feels it's going in hard. When it's hard, back it off ever so slightly. This is so you can put the Loctite in. So I'll just demonstrate again. So, what you're doing is you see in here, and you've got these three prongs, and then you've got the thread. So what you're going to do is put the Loctite in just the side that you're going to turn it towards. So since this is rotating that way, we'll put it just either a dob of Loctite either side of that. So when we tighten this up, it runs over the Loctite. Because what we don't want to do is run Loctite all the way down this thread. Which is why we do it at the last minute. Take your Loctite, you dab it in there. And there and there, you then screw this in so it goes over the lock tight. Back it twice. You then take your 30 newton meter torque wrench, and then you give it the final click, and that is that rear symbol. start putting the parts together. So if we take our body again, and again, grab a rag, we can now put this back into the vise. And it's held in. Next things we need to grab out of our service kit is this poppet and the large spring. So the poppet will go in first, and then we will put the large spring in here, and then that's that put together, which we then will hold down with this part. Start with, put some anti-seize on this thread, just around it. And we'll put the 
this in and screw it down. So screw it in by hand, it will be a bit of resistance as you're not only trying to get past the no ring, you're also trying to screw against the spring, but do as best as you can by hand to feel that it goes in smoothly and it's not picking up anywhere. And once it's down by hand, you get your big torque wrench, place this over this, and you just give it the final quick. And once you've done that, this is screwed in at 120 Nm, that is this part where it's single. And the final thing to do is to put the two back together. So one of the best ways to do this is to put your body down, the male end down there, pick up your female end and line it up so you notice these three lots of cat screws and then three cutouts on this part, the cat screws line up with the cutouts. So that actually can fully push down. You also see in here that these are the these are the indents, and they're what help hold the, the part in there. So to do this, push it down, and then again, just push against the table, click, and there you have a reassembled IB one hundred and eight.